So welcome guys to second video about how to use OBD2. On the previous video I was explaining basics, how to start, what's necessary to fully diagnose a car and know what kind of tools to use. So you can uh, visit our channel and see that video. Today I'm gonna show you example. Uh, let's start from uh, people asking which uh, device to choose. I don't recommend cheap and poor devices. What I mean by saying poor. Poor is just code reading and erasing codes. That's not gonna fix your car. Uh, another thing, you're not gonna be able to see uh, read the data stream, which is live data. That's what I'm gonna use today. I'm gonna show you uh, how to use it. The procedure, how to fix the car by uh, following the steps I'm gonna tell you. Uh, this is a uh, old BMW E46 uh, petrol engine 2.5. The only problem with this car, owner said, it's misfiring when it's cold. When it's hot, it's fine. Let's say got power, it drives fine. There's no problem with that. Only problem, cylinder number three is misfiring and that's what I'm gonna show you now. So <clears throat> let's start the engine. It's gonna idle. It's cold, it's gonna idle and it's idling fine. But as, as soon as the uh, rev's gonna drop, it starts shaking. It's gonna be misfiring and we probably gonna see code saying cylinder number three is misfiring and probably gonna see a check engine light. I can feel already the car is shaking. Yes. So before I'm gonna read the code and erase that code, I'm gonna show you what's happening with the cylinders. This is the view of what the cylinders are doing. You can see <clears throat> cylinder number three is misfiring a lot. Others are fine below one. This one is five. So it's very bad. If we're not gonna see check engine light, we're probably gonna see the code. Let's check it now. Yes, we got misfire cylinder number three. And even if I delete that code, this is this is what I'm talking about. Erasing codes will not gonna fix your car. It's still gonna show rough idle on cylinder number three, which is now around four. Others are fine, just that one. Again, we can check the code. There's no code, but it's gonna be coming back as soon as we're gonna start the engine every morning. When it's colder, it's getting worse. When it's, let's say, warm or hot day, it's fine. It's not so noticeable, but on cold days, cold mornings, it's gonna be very bad. What's causing that? Well, some people will say, oh, let's change the spark plugs, let's change coils, uh, maybe vacuum leaks. Uh, the owner did actually a lot to this engine, but he couldn't fix the problem. I couldn't fix the problem for today, but I'm gonna tell you what was it. And also how I discovered that by just using OBD2, later tools I needed. OBD2 scanner is to show you where's the problem if you got knowledge of course where's the problem what kind of tools to use uh, to determine what was the problem so knowing that the engine had new coils new spark plugs injectors was checked so what I discovered by uh, viewing angles of the timing this is Vanos this is engine with Vanos is BMW Vanos uh, what I discovered what one of the numbers here degrees was off the scale now it's 119.74 degrees and before was 123.5 i know these engines and i knew it's 3.5 degrees off so when i took the valve cover off i could see one of the cams 
wasn't aligned properly so I knew the timing was bad so I knew it's not gonna be coil spark plug etc I had to uh, set the timing correctly and then check again if the problem was gone but unfortunately the problem still persists why I want to say he had this problem for let's say few years I think he said and driving without proper timing it's gonna cause damage to your valves to your engine so that's what happened so the final test for this engine was uh, during leak down test leak down test is just uh, something different than um, compression test with compression test you have to attach a dial and crank the engine to get pressure and you can read uh, the differences however the um, compression test didn't show a lot so I have to do leak down test you simply applying pressure to the cylinder with top dead center so you have to turn the engine lock it so the both um, valve is going to be closed and you can hear actually if one of the valves is leaking not holding pressure you can hear let's say exhaust you're going to be hearing from exhaust side if it's intake you're going to hear it from the manifold if it's piston rings of course piston rings you're going to hear especially with cold engine you're going to hear some hiss from the crankcase so in this case as usually uh, there was a bad timing for long so one of the valves is leaking even if the uh, top dead center is set so uh, using a simple glove on the exhaust I can hear and see the glove is expanding the pressure is going to the exhaust and that engine is not holding pressure on cylinder number three so the only fix for this engine is doing a cylinder head rebuild so probably new valve and others needs to be changed or checked and uh, redone so guys going back to our devices which one to pick I strongly recommend not to buy cheap ones the cheap ones usually don't have a long list of supported vehicles they don't have uh, uh, software support and they don't not, or they not gonna show you uh, live data which I showed you before which is the key to uh, when you master all these things it's the key for diagnosing car and fixing the car so if you wanna buy cheap device uh, which is gonna be doing only check engine light ABS and stuff like that that's fine but remember raising codes not gonna fix your cars before you actually gonna buy any device like that I, I strongly recommend to get an app for your Android or, or Apple device which is usually free or these apps are not not that expensive like these devices and they probably do have some kind of support over the internet and but they usually don't have any other modules except the engine I'm gonna pick uh, BMW again in this BM BMW we're gonna see three things uh, drive which is engine chassis and body so for the engine everything for the engine this is manual so we're not gonna see automatic transmission in here however so we can see it now here so we can choose from two um, ECUs however this car is manual so we're not gonna be connected to that and uh, chassis body so everything like mirrors maybe onboard diagnostics maybe uh, multifunction steering wheel airbag uh, for the chassis we got ABS and angle sensor for the steering wheel so like I said before um, choosing something cheap it's not gonna be perfect solution if you have problem with body or chassis module so uh, let same with apps so before you're gonna buy any of these make sure read reviews check on the internet what kind of support it's gonna give you and then you're gonna decide uh, what to choose if you are DIYer like me I started like as a DIY guy now I'm fixing cars for people uh, this device is actually fine However, I got another device which is a bit more expensive. It's doing not only diagnostics like this one, it doesn't have any interaction with uh, ECUs. Let's say we're gonna 
we want to reset adaptations we want to reset uh, services we want to do dpfs we want to do this and that this is just for diagnostics the other device got more power more processing power it got more access to the uh, computers of the engine transmission others so we can do more diagnostics and that's gonna save us time and also money so if you want to do it uh, professionally I strongly recommend uh, thinking about something more expensive than that so hey if you want more videos like that please let us know in the comments give us likes uh, please subscribe uh, you can visit our Instagram Facebook also Autodog Parts Store uh, so thank you for watching and see you next time